Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to FPL BD. This is the FPL channel from Bangladesh where I share my FPL thoughts and contents with you. So welcome, welcome back to my channel after a long time. Uh, I haven't made any video since a long time as the pre-seasons uh, was going on. But now that I have watched the pre-seasons, I have uh, gathered some ideas about the players, uh, the teams. Now I want to share my thoughts about the players who did well in this pre-season. First of all, if you are new to this channel, uh, you are most welcome to this channel. Please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so that you can get notification whenever I upload new videos. And I'm pretty sure I will be uploading new videos every week and I will try to keep you updated and provide contents as much as possible. So please do subscribe to my channel. And if you have already subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. So let's get into this video. This video is about the preseason heroes. I, I am to, I'm calling them heroes because they have done uh, well. And not only because they have done well, uh, because these are the players whom we can seriously consider for our FPL team. Uh, I'm not I'm not going to include players like uh, Mohamed Salah, Trent Alexander Arnold, uh, or even like uh, Erling Haaland, Harry Kane, Son heung Min, because these are the players uh, about whom we already know. We will take them whether they perform or they play in the preseason or not. I'm going to take about. I'm going to talk about some other players whom we were not so sure whether to take them or not. Now I'm going to provide you some stats, some information, and maybe also convince you to take these players in your team or at least keep them in your watch list. So uh, I'm going to start this video right now. So I will talk about ten players whom uh, 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 I will talk about the ten players who impressed me the most in this preseason definitely not the obvious players so the first player i think you already know about that player because uh, he is currently the highest owned player in fpl and that is none other than gabriel jesus the newly signed striker for arsenal they have signed him from manchester city and till then arsenal has uh, arsenal has been pretty dominant in attack and gabriel jesus has also been uh, pretty consistent and also very well in that striker position in that number nine position so uh, i'm gonna show you some stats the first stats which you might notice is the ownership the ownership of gabriel jesus is now more than 60 percent 62.1 percent which is highest in fpl this season so he has played three matches till now in preseason and in the first match he has come as a sub and he has scored two goals this is where he has uh got our uh, attention or we have uh, started to keep the track whether he plays or not in the next preseason match whether he scores or not and till now he has played three preseason matches 192 minutes and he has scored four goals with one assist his current fpl price is 8 million and you can see the fixtures are pretty good for Arsenal for game week 1 to 5. Not only game week 1 to 5, their fixtures are pretty good after that as well. So I think uh, at 8 million, who is the highest owned player in FPL, you can own him. At least if you own him, even if he does not score, even if he does not return point, there is no loss because uh, almost every manager own him. So if you don't own him, there is a risk because the ownership is so high. Uh, people might even captain him if he starts performing. So uh, if he performs, his price will go up so high because of the ownership. And also you will be damaged a lot because of that same ownership. So I think he, he, he I know this is just pre-seasons, but he's, he has uh, set himself in the team pretty well. And Arsenal is uh, already a very good team from the last season. So I think uh, Jesus will get some advantage up in the front. And he might be on the penalties as well. We are not so sure right now. Uh, Saka was on penalties last season, but Jesus is more experienced. And also uh, he has taken plenty of penalties in his Man City career. So he might take the penalties as well. But even if he doesn't, I think... Uh, at 8 million, we can get a pretty good forward uh, if we get Gabriel Jesus. And even if he doesn't turn out to be good, we can move out to other options as the price is uh, very flexible. Because 8 million is a very flexible price where you can uh, upgrade a little and get uh, other strikers 
maybe uh, Darwin Nunes from uh, Liverpool, whom we are going to talk about later, uh, maybe uh, Arling Haaland, or maybe you can downgrade him to someone else as well. So Gabriel Jesus is the player who has impressed me the most in this preseason, and he's my top pick from preseason heroes. The next player is just the player we were talking about, Darwin Nunes from Liverpool. Uh, I won't say he has convinced me a lot because he has played three games till now and he has performed in only one match and in the rest of the two matches, he did not do pretty well. Uh, I won't say he did not too well. He performed really bad in those two games. Uh, his touches, his shots, his headers, everything was going wrong. But in the last match against uh, Leipzig, he has uh, put on a great show where he scored four goals in the second half after coming on as a sub. So these are the stats of Darwin Nunes. Till now, he has played 120 minutes in three matches. He has scored four, four goals, but all the four goals came in the same match against Leipzig in the last match. His current ownership is 15.2% and his price is 9 million. Even though he is a bit pricey than Jesus, but if you choose Darwin Nunes, uh, I think you will get the advantage that he's from a team who scores a lot of goals in the season. So uh, he will get assists from Robertson and Arnold. He will get passes from Mo Salah. Also, he will get support from uh, Luis Diaz. And also, I, I will put uh, Darwin Nunes ahead of Luis Diaz as the third Liverpool uh, choice or the second Liverpool attacker after Mo Salah because even if Luis Diaz is a uh, is a experienced player in this team, at least more than Nunes, because he has come in the last season, uh, he plays very well. But he's not a goal scorer. He's more like a provider, the dribbler, the playmaker. So Dar Darwin Nunes will be the one who will get the crosses and the passes. So he has more chances of scoring goals. And you know, uh, goals means points. So I think uh, Darwin will be a better choice than uh, Diaz, even though he's one million uh, extra in price. The next player is, uh, I think these are the two forwards that uh, we uh, found out uh, very impressive. And also, you will find more matches of Nunes because he has uh, one more preseason match and another match, which is a uh, community shield final against Man City. I think that will be the real match where you will see whether Nunes fits in this team or not. And, uh, uh, and now we will move on to the midfield. The first player, this might surprise you because he's known as the FPL fraud because uh, he does not perform uh, when we take him in our FPL team, but he performed well in the last part of the last season and he has carrying he has been carrying on that form in this preseason as well. I think his stats uh, literally made me crazy because he has four goals and four assists in four matches in the preseason. That's just in 180 minutes. I know this is preseasons, but four goals and four assists is. Uh, uh, I think uh, that is the best performance I've seen in this preseason. His ownership is just 7% and I won't uh, recommend you to take him right into your team right now uh, because of the fixtures. Also, uh, I am not trusting this preseason too much. So you can at least keep him in your watch list and as soon as the uh, fixtures get better, if you see that he's performing in Premier League as well, you can just transfer him in. He's just 7 million of price, so this won't hurt you that bad. The next player is Jadon Sancho. I think uh, Manchester United players were the one whom we ignored uh, right from the start of this season in our first draft or in our every draft. But now after watching the pre-seasons, I think uh, even though we cannot say for sure that they will perform, but uh, now we are gaining the trust that yeah, the, the team is building under Eric Ten Hag and the wingers and the forwards are performing. And especially uh, the front three, uh, which is Sancho, Martial and Rashford are performing pretty well. All of them are getting goals and assists. So Sancho is uh, a player that everyone is keeping an eye for. Also, the United fixture seems good right from the start. Sancho has an ownership of 11.5% currently at this game. He has played four matches and 218 minutes. And he has scored three goals still now, which is not bad. Three goals in four matches. Uh, at least uh, this shows that he's performing in this team and he's, uh, he's setting up well with the uh, teammates now because uh, Martial has come back from Sevilla after he was uh, in loan in Sevilla last season. So I think uh, if you want a United forward, uh, you can get Sancho, but uh, right now 
I think even though he has scored three goals right now, a lot of people won't keep his trust uh, on Sancho right now because 7.5 is not a cheap price bracket. So uh, if we want a United player because of the fixtures and also we want to try something new, I think uh, we can spend a little, uh, little less on United forward, which is his teammate, uh, Marcus Rashford. He is uh, from the same team. He plays on the left wing forward, and I'm pretty sure he will continue playing in the left, left wing forward because Eric Ten Hag doesn't uh, quite seem to be liking Elanga. And Martial is playing up front in the center forward. So I think Rashford is a nail starter in left wing forward. So uh, I think uh, I've put the wrong price here. He's uh, 6.5 million of price. and. I don't think I've put the uh, right stats as well. I think Rashford has uh, started three or four matches and scored two goals. I think I, I put the wrong information, all the wrong information here. But the ownership is right because uh, I also own him right now. His ownership is 13.2%. I don't know about the minutes, but he has scored two goals still now. And his price is 6.5 million in the game. So uh, that's 6 million or 6.5 million bracket. Uh, I think Rashford is a pre pretty good player. <coughs> The next player is uh, James Madison. Uh, he performed really, really, really well last season and especially in the uh, last part of the last season. But currently his ownership is not that high, but he's still performing uh, just like he did in the last season. He's coming on as a sub and scoring goals, uh, making assists, scoring goals again. So uh, I think in for, Ma in for Madison is uh, one of the best FPL assets you can have because he just scores goals from anywhere. He scores from free kick, he assists from corner, he scores from uh, box, he scores from outside the box. So if Madison is fit, I think uh, you can get him uh, whatever the fixture is and I think currently he's on form just the form he had in the last season uh, he has played three matches still now in the preseason uh, one goal two assist I'm not sure whether it was one goal two assist or two goals one assist but uh, he has played well uh, whatever he has played in this preseason his ownership is very very low right now it's just 5.8 percent and uh, I think he's a pretty good dif uh, differential as well because because of the ownership being too low. So if you want a differential 8 million midfielder, I think uh, Madison is your man. The fixture is not the easiest, but as I said, uh, the fixtures really doesn't matter for Leicester City and Madison. Also, I don't think th this is uh, that bad because United, Chelsea, Arsenal all are not that solid uh, in, in defense. Arsenal might be the best one among these three teams because Chelsea has lost their main defenders maybe will lose more and now they're not being able to sign any other defenders as well United is uh, I don't know how will they perform in this season under Ten Hag so I think uh, the fixtures are pretty well to have him in your team and the next player is his teammate who is just 1 million cheaper than Madison. His ownership is even lower, 4.5 million. His uh, price is just 7 million. He has scored three goals in three matches. And I think the formation uh, uh, Brendan Rodgers is playing in this season, which is 4-2-3-1, I think uh, Harvey Barnes will be nailed on starter in the left wing forward. And uh, if he's a starter, I think, I think he's still at 7 million, but only if he's fit and he's playing well. Uh, the current form will convince me to take him in your team. Uh, if you if you can't afford uh, an eight million midfielder, maybe you need a little a little cheaper midfielder. Maybe you need you need that one extra million for a premium asset. I think you can uh, just downgrade Madison or your eight million midfielder to Harvey Barnes in that case. And the next player is a uh, even cheaper player. Uh, Gabriel Martinelli from Arsenal. He has played uh, really well in the last season, though he was not consistent throughout the season. But when he was in form, he was scoring goals and making assists throughout uh, that that period of form. Uh, and I think now is the time when he's in form because Arsenal as a team is in form. He has played uh, three matches and played 232 minutes. Uh, even though he did not score many goals, but he has one goal along with four assists. So he's uh, just uh, making the balls for uh, Gabriel Jesus or Bukayo Saka. And his price is so low. His price is lower than all other uh, Arsenal uh, forwards who are playing at the moment. So I think this is a very good price to have an Arsenal forward. I think he's just the cheaper version of uh, Bukayo Saka. So in midfield, if you if you can't afford Bukayo Saka, you can just go for Gabriel Martinelli. As also, uh, 
their newly signed forward uh, Fabio Vieira, I guess his name. So Vieira is also injured, so there is no risk of rotation. Uh, maybe he will get subbed after 70 minutes, uh, but I think he's a nailed on starter at least, and he's a good forward at 6 million, and the fixtures are already pretty well. His ownership is also more than 10%, which is 13 at the moment. Uh, another famous player is the forward from uh, Wolves which is Pedro Neto. The Spanish forward is a red hot pick at the uh, at FPL right now because uh, he was the nailed on starting forward who is also a very good player. We all know that Neto is a fantastic player, uh, but he was injured throughout the season in last season. So we could not have him and we could not see him. And the reason uh, uh, that he was injured uh, for a long time of the season uh, is the reason that his price is so low this season. His price is just 5.5 million and he's a nailed on starter. Uh, their fixtures are really well Leeds, Fulham, Newcastle, Bournemouth are four easy fixtures. Though Newcastle are not that easy right now because the team is improving a lot, but the rest of the fixtures seems uh, quite good. His ownership is uh, currently under just 20%, but uh, at one time it was even more than 25%. So he's that uh, uh, I think the international or everyone's everyone's chief forward. He has played three games so far in three seasons. He has played 152 minutes and scored three goals with one assist. His price is just 5.5 million and I don't think there is any risk about him uh, not starting. So if you have Neto, I don't think you have to worry. I'm not sure whether he will score goals or he will make assists, but uh, I, can, I can at least uh, uh, make sure I can at least give you the surety that he, he's going to start most of the matches and he will, he will get most of the minutes as well. And he's involved in this game a lot. So if Ulf scores, I think he will get involved in something. So I, I will definitely suggest him as a, as a cheap forward in your midfield. So the last player uh, who has caused a uh, little ownership of Pedro Neto is Leon Bailey from Aston Villa. He's the... Uh, new red hot player red hot uh, midfielder because he's even cheaper than pedro neto neto is 5.5 million and bailey is just 5 million so even cheaper just uh, 0.5 extra than our traditional bench player who is just a 4.5 million midfielder so you can have uh, a starting forward of aston villa at just 5 million who is in good form and i'm call i'm saying that he is a starting forward because gerard his uh, team manager has said so because he said that if he has to make a team for tomorrow he will definitely keep uh, leon bailey in that team and i think uh, Danny Ings is not uh, fitting in that team very well. Uh, the formation they are playing is 4-2-3-1 uh, or 4-3-3, where they need a right winger because uh, Watkins plays as a center forward, Coutinho plays as a uh, left winger, and in that right wing position, they have Emiliano Buendia and, and Leon Bailey. Though Leon Bailey can play as right wing, left wing, and center forward as well, but uh, He's a left-footed player and he gets advantage in that right wing position. So he, he's uh, just fitting in himself very well in this team. Also, when Aston Villa plays uh, as the two-striker formation, uh, he also fits in uh, as the second striker along with Watkins very well. So his current ownership is not very high because a lot of people are still uh, in the game. Uh, uh, I think 50% uh, or less than 50% players has, has signed up for the game because uh, still two weeks are all, almost two weeks are left to kick off so uh, more people will sign uh, in 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 this site and uh, i think his ownership will increase not so much but it will increase a bit and he has played four matches till now 180 minutes and he has scored two goals and one assist in the last match he has impressed me and all the managers all the fpl managers his team manager uh, the most because he has come on as a sub against manchester united and he has scored one goals and one assist in that 45 minutes the fixtures are pretty good bournemouth everton crystal palace all are the easy fixtures uh, which are rated uh, uh, in in the difficulty rating as two and West Ham and Arsenal can be a little tricky but not the toughest so if you are looking for a fifth midfielder uh, whom you will play regularly or uh, or even a fourth midfielder in your uh, 3 4 or 4 4 2 formation I think Leon Bailey could be your guy if you can't afford even Pedro Neto or even alongside Neto 
I just think that if Bailey is fit, if Gerard says that he will start him, I think uh, he's a good pick and he's also in my team right now. So that's all the players, that's all the information I had to give you and I had till now. I think you have enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the video, please uh, do like this video. Please like this video. It will uh, help me a lot to uh, improve and also uh, it will help me to increase uh, my viewers my subscribers and everything so please uh, if you enjoyed this video give a like and leave a comment if you have any queries about fpl or your team and you can follow our facebook page which is fpl bd and this is our youtube channel we are also available on twitter as well as fpl bd so thank you so much for watching till now uh, you can watch other videos as well uh, i will be back soon with a new video and till then uh, best wishes for your team and good luck so thank you so much i will just uh, take your leave here